Hi everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. And did you know that your own system or Olympus camera actually has a picture file management system built right into it? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now it's a feature I don't think many of us are really need or going to use, but it can come in handy. And I'll give you an example. Uh, when I'm out in the field and I'm doing my birds and flight photography and I take, you know, I'm using Pro Capture, I'm shooting at 50 frames per second. I could take thousands, you know, of images in a single shoot. Uh, it's not uncommon to have three, four thousand images, and I know I've come home with eight thousand images on my SD card, and then I have to load all of those into my computer and sift through them and manage them that way, and that's perfectly fine. However, there are times when you're in the field and you're running low on card space, and there's thousands of images you really don't need to keep, right? So, how do you delete those kind of in bulk? so that you can free up some memory card space while you're in the field. And also how can you tag some images so that when you get back and load them onto your computer that you can find those tagged images very quickly. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. Now, before we get started, I'm gonna insert two memory cards into the camera. There's a little trick I wanna show you that we'll be using throughout the demonstration because if you're like me, you have a bucket load of these SD cards laying around. And when you put them into the camera, you're not sure exactly what might be on each one before you get started. So there's a way you can check very easily in the camera. So let's go ahead and turn the camera on. As you know, to start looking at the pictures on your card, you just push the play button, then you can rotate through. And I can see I'm on card slot number one. This is picture number four out of eight. And if I go beyond picture number eight, it goes automatically to card slot number two. But if I'm going to quickly switch between card slot number one and two, all I have to do is push and hold the play button, then rotate the front dial, and I'll see the card slot one and two icons. And I can just quickly go to card slot number two this way, see what's on here, quickly go back to card slot number one, and play those images. All right, both cards are now formatted, and I set the configuration to be dual independent. So Every time I take a picture, it's going to capture the raw image on the card slot number one and then make a copy onto card slot number two. So what I'm going to do now is just take a few hundred pictures of this bouquet of flowers and then uh, change the framing left and right, up and down. And then we're going to delete all the images that do not have this bouquet of flowers front and center. Now, if you look in the bottom right, you'll see that I took 254 images and I was at 25 frames per second. So that's really only 10 seconds of shooting. And... Uh, if I back up and go to the thumbnail view here, you can see that I don't want to keep a lot of these frames. I only want to keep maybe the frames starting from about here. And then we'll just go down maybe to about here and then delete the rest in this particular burst. Now, the normal way to delete images is you push the play button and then you push the trash button and then you click yes to erase. And you can do it that way and that would be very time consuming to do them one at a time now you can even speed this process up by going into the menu and going over to your uh, file menu and go to page two and go down here to quick erase and just turn that on and then make sure you've selected raw and raw plus jpeg so let me go ahead and change these so it erases both copies if i have both i only have raw in this case but as good practice i like to have both on and now when I push the play button and hit the delete key, I don't have to go through that confirmation process. So that speeds it up quite a bit, but there's an even faster way. What I can do is just go into the play menu, back off into my thumbnail view, and I'm on picture number one again. And by default, the record button is set to be a check mark button. So I can check these ones that I want to keep, or I'm sorry, the ones that I want to delete, like so and then click the OK button, scroll down here and say Erase Selected, and say Yes. And now it's erased those six images. The other way you can do it is you can use your touch screen, turn the touch screen check mark button on, like so, and then I can just select, like so, the ones that I want to delete. And the same thing, click the OK button, say Erase Selected, and erase all the ones that I checked. An even faster way to do this is say, press and hold the record button. And you'll notice that check mark came on. If I press and hold it again, it turns the check mark off. So it works like a toggle. So I can press and hold it so the check mark is on, then quickly just rotate 
through as many images as I want here. And let go, click the OK button, and say Erase Selected, and say Yes. Now this is something new in the OM1, and that's star ratings, and by default, the ISO button is a star rating button when you're in the playback mode. So let's go back into the thumbnail view, and I'm going to scroll down, and let's say I like this image, and I can push the ISO button. I like this image and this image, or I can do it by touch screen by pushing the star rating button here, select that image, push the star rating, and you can see it assigns the star. Go back out, maybe assign this one, give it a star, go back out. I mean, it's easier just to push the ISO button, but there are options here to do the same thing. So let's say I like this sequence of nine images. What this will allow me to do now is I can import these images and that star rating will carry over into Olympus Workspace and I believe Lightroom as well. So I can quickly find this group of nine images that I liked by selecting images that have a star rating. You can also mass select and assign star ratings, but you have to do it a little bit differently. What you do is, let's go ahead and press and hold the record button and select another group of nine images that I liked. And then click the OK button and say rating selected. And then I can assign it a specific rating. I have the default set to two stars, but let's set these to five stars, for example. And again, these star ratings carry over when they're imported into your computer. Now there's one more thing you can do, and I don't recommend this, but you can erase everything except the images that you assigned a star rating to. So all you have to do is go into the menu, and we go into the playback menu right here and say erase all. So we click OK. We'll select card slot number one. And then now it says, do you really want to delete images with rating flags? If yes, then you say erase. No means save. So if you select save, it's going to save everything that has a star rating and delete everything that does not have a star rating. So I'll go ahead and click OK here and say yes. And I think I selected what? About 12 images? Let me see. I selected 18 images that have star ratings. So card slot number one now only has 18 images, as you can see down here. So as you can see, using the check mark system, you can quickly delete multiple images at one time. Or if you're using the star rating system, you can also delete everything but the star rated images, or just use it as a marker. So when you bring them back in the Lightroom, you can quickly find your favorite images while you're out in the field. Now let's say, for example, you accidentally deleted some images that you didn't want to delete. Uh, maybe you used the star rating system and erased everything but the ones that were star rated. Remember in the beginning that I had dual independent card setup so that everything I wrote to card number one got written to card number two. And everything we've done up to this point has not touched any of the images on card slot number two. So I have basically a full backup on card slot number two at this point, which can be really, really handy when you make a mistake on card slot number one. So let me show you how you can copy the images from card slot number two back to card slot number one. And remember, I only have 18 images here on card slot number one. So what I can do is go back into the menu and say copy all. And I'm gonna say copy from card slot number two back to card slot number one and click OK. It's a little warning here that it can only copy uh, files four gig or less for video, but we don't care about that. And we'll click yes. And this takes about two or three minutes to copy, depending on how many images you have. So that took about a minute to copy uh, 270 images or so. And as you can see on card slot one, I'm back up to 304 images. And if we go out to the thumbnail view, you can see that all my star rated images are still here. And if I scroll down far enough, there's actually a copy of those star rated images back on card slot number one, but just without a star rating anymore. So now I have two copies of all my star rated images, just so you know. So as you can see, you can quickly delete multiple images, freeing up a lot of card space while you're out in the field. And you can quickly star rate a lot of images so that when you get back into your computer, you can quickly find those favorite images. And then finally, you can delete everything but the star rated images if you want to. Again, I don't recommend doing it that way because you might inadvertently delete images you didn't intend to. 
But if you had put two cards into your camera and set it up for dual independent, you can always recover those. Now I want to touch on the star rating system and a couple other things you might have questions on and then we'll wrap it up. When you go into the playback mode, you can see that this uh, image has a star rating and I can toggle that on and off like so. And that is the default star rating, but if I press and hold the star button here and rotate the front dial, I can change the default star rating to a five star. So if I go to the next image and want to add a star, I can make that a five star. I can go to the next image. Let's say I don't want that one to be a five star rating. I can roll this back to two stars and then go to the next image. And if I push the star rating button again, now the default is two stars. Also, if you go into the menu, in the play menu on page three, right, right here, you can set the star ratings that are available to you. So you can turn off all the ones you're not going to use anyway, or just leave them all on, which is probably best anyway. Okay, so let me touch on a couple other things you may have seen. Let's go ahead and quickly select these six images. We'll click OK. And we've talked about erasing those. We can also copy these to card slot number two. We can also assign a rating if we want to, which we've done. But there's also this share order selected. And the semantics here, I think, are a little rough. What you're actually doing when you say share order selected, you're ordering the camera to select these images to be shared with your uh, app on your smartphone. So if I click on this, you'll now see that there's a little share icon on these six images. I think I have to go up, yeah. So there's a share icon on those six images there. Um, the other thing I can do, they're still selected. I can click OK. I can also lock these. So I'm going to lock these. So now you see the share icon is going to be sharing the raw image and it's going to uh, lock these. So what does that mean? Well, now that they're locked, if I push the play button, go back in the thumbnail view, and I select these images again, and I'll select three more on top of that. Let's say I want to assign these a different star rating, five stars, like so. If I select the locked image, let's go ahead and zoom in on that one. You can see that it still has a two star rating, even though I tried to assign it a five star rating and it's still being shared, it's sharing the raw image and it's still locked. And if we go down to the images that were not locked, you can see that it has a five star rating. So locking the image basically prevents you from making any changes that you have made when, if you had selected and made changes before, if that makes sense. Now to unlock these, just select the locked image. I guess that's one there. So we'll select this one. And I can push the AEL button, which is the lock and unlock button as well. So now it's unlocked. So now I can make changes to this if I want to. Go to the next one and unlock it. Or like I said, these buttons toggle, usually, whatever feature on and off. So I can just turn these off very quickly. And I'm not sure if there's a way to bulk unlock things. I didn't see a way to do that, but, you know, it, it can be done certainly individually. So I think that's enough for today. And if you found this video helpful, click the like button, consider subscribing, and maybe share it on your social media. And if you can, buy me a coffee or two. It helps making these videos a lot easier for me. So thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.